and uh, the rest of the staff uh, have done an amazing job um, uh, at keeping uh, uh, us on, uh, on, frankly, full boil. Uh, and uh, and I applaud uh, our our efforts uh, as we all have. While we may have paused in certain areas, uh, we have not paused with our effort to continue the land bank mission. Uh, we certainly haven't paused with uh, uh, our efforts to stabilize and revitalize our neighborhoods. Uh, and so, with that, I'd like to call the order the the June sixteenth. Um, Land Bank meeting. Uh, I appreciate all board members being here today. The last time we met was in uh, February. Um, and uh, was it February or March, guys? March. Uh, last March time we met was in March, March, March 24th. So March 24th. Oh, sorry, right. So the minutes went out uh, for the March 24th meeting. Can I get a motion to approve those as documented? So moved. A second. The minutes are moved. Thank you very much. Can I suggest that everybody mute their microphone? I'm getting feedback from somewhere. And then uh, if you're going to talk, uh, uh, put uh, unmute uh, to talk. Yeah, uh, uh, David, do you have, or Mark, do you guys have administrative or do we just need to do it individually? I think it's just individually. Yeah, I think Rich, if you just want to stay on, that would be good. Yep. And we'll all mute for now. So, uh, Joe, if you don't mind, uh, could we uh, just get a an updated treasurer's report? We haven't heard one in a while. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, you've got that in the the minutes, uh, not the minutes, the, the packet that was sent out. As you can see, we still are reasonably flush with funds. We've got about a, a million and a half. Uh, we spent uh, $220,000 so far this month, um, basically uh, with our demolition contract. Uh, so we're in good shape on that. And we also have finished off uh, one of our administrative uh, years. It's no longer showing when you look at the details. And I guess that admin three is about ready, Dave, when you said to come off. I think there's one or two items that we're showing on there uh, that basically finish off uh, what our responsibilities are for that uh, those monies. Anybody has any questions? I'll try and answer them. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, admin three, which is the neighbors for neighborhood uh, program that included our uh, Green Street project um, that closed our, our ownership share has gone over to um, the developer Green Street development, uh, Dr. Valetti. Uh, they've completed the uh, outside facade, put on new windows following the historic uh, guidelines. Um, so the last transaction there was um, paying the uh, asbestos contractor. So we'll be able to uh, take our administrative fee to close that grant out. And uh, by next uh, meeting, we will no longer be reporting on that project or on that class. Excellent. So yeah, that is really excellent. It shows that we've been moving right along. And that leaves us with uh, our last admin monies and the current year's monies. If I hear no questions, I'll move to approve the report. Yeah. Anyone else? Joe, if you could move it then, uh, that would be great. Very good. All those in favor, I keep by saying aye. 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 And the treasury report is moved. So great stuff. I appreciate uh, again uh, everyone's attendance today. I, I did want to take uh, just a, a moment uh, just to kind of reflect on, you know, so the last time we met was March 24th. Um, we talked about, uh, uh, you know, continuing uh, uh, letting the contract for the demolitions. Uh, obviously, on the 24th of March, we probably didn't have any sense of what a pause was going to look like in terms of activity, what was critical, what wasn't. Uh, but again, I have to applaud uh, the land bank team, the staff and leadership team for continuing to drive activity, 
Uh, on May 20th, uh, I sent out an email that basically kind of gave a, a state of the state and a, and a touch base since uh, we hadn't had a, an opportunity to, to talk to each other. We had canceled the, the April meeting and again in May. Uh, and at that point, we had five properties that were down. Um, there were um, uh, continued actions uh, with uh, the home leasing uh, 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 team uh, with the Eastern Avenue and St. Mary's project. Um, uh, a reach out to the Amsterdam mayor to kind of put in play uh, activity in Amsterdam. And we continued to perform in the background, continued to do the mission and continued to drive uh, what we were, you know, uh, all signed up to do, which was to continue to revitalize, stabilize our neighborhoods. Uh, and, you know, coming into today's meeting, talking about the Green Street project, if anyone has had an opportunity to drive by that uh, project, it clearly uh, now is uh, a, you know, a signature home. It looks beautiful. Um, it's at the, you know, one of the entry points or, or outlet points, if you will, whatever your perspective is, to the stockade. And it really has made a difference. I know the, the owner of, um, uh, uh, what is it called, the Waterworks Apartments, David? Um, they were uh, really, really supportive. They were very happy that, uh, you know, they put a big investment right across the street a number of years ago. And uh, and uh, the project that uh, we were engaged with uh, had languished and, and now it's not, and it really looks uh, fantastic. So another success story, I feel like uh, in light of all that we managed through um, uh, and I'm, I'm happy that uh, that uh, that's, you know, looking up. And as David said, we won't be reporting on that after uh, after this uh, this month, um, and you know, we we engaged uh, uh, to continue, as I said, the the demolitions and work on um, the stabilization of our neighborhoods. And of course, uh, you know, we've been met um, uh, with a lot of success. Um, and uh, I'd like to uh, I'll just say I appreciate everyone's efforts, uh, certainly uh, from a leadership perspective. So with that, we've got four items that we want to talk about tonight. Um, I'll turn over to the executive director. We'll take the actions uh, that we uh, have planned. Um, and then I'd like to uh, have a dialogue on, uh, you know, what we can do as a, as a board, what we can do in terms of um, diversity, what we can do in terms of what, what do we do with the dollars and cents that we have um, uh, moving forward. Uh, and uh, how can we continue to engage our neighborhoods and play a strong role in stabilizing uh, outside of the standard demolitions and rehab. So with that, I'll turn over to David for Executive Director Report. Yeah, I'll just add to uh, Rich's comprehensive report. Uh, I want to thank Mark. So since that May update, we've uh, got our 15th property down, and I think we're looking to add two more today. So. Uh, Demolition contractor Gore Construction has been very, very busy and uh, they've done a great job and Mark's been out there on the site uh, regularly uh, uh, reviewing the progress and ensuring that things are done uh, uh, in the manner that we expect. So thank him. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, the city announced uh, seven additional demolitions that they put out to bid today. Um, I really want to thank uh, Kristen and, and her team. Um, you know, the reason why we're going to be able to do more at a lower price is because the coordination that we've received uh, with the city, whether it's them doing the water disconnects for the properties, uh, we've been able to um, streamline the process so we're not constantly spending uh, money to take properties we don't have a specific use for. So that's all gone very, very smooth. Mark and I constant, are consistently meeting with the um, Renaissance Square developers, home leasing to on a biweekly basis to get updates on their project, which is going along uh, on schedule, a little delayed with, with COVID, but they weren't ever shut down because affordable housing was uh, exempt and uh, allowed to move forward. Uh, in addition, uh, you know, we're going to proceed uh, moving forward with our work on Crane Street. Uh, we're very excited about the changes with uh, in Schenectady about community land trust and better neighborhoods merging together. Uh, we have a nice site up there and, um, you know, we're doing our part to do the due diligence to get uh, interested uh, developers to put a project together that the community supports. So um, that's. Uh, where we are. If there are any questions, let me know. Uh, in, in Amsterdam, things are going. Uh, Nick continues to be a great um, partner. And 
working with him regularly to uh, identify uh, with the new mayor the uh, demolitions that they want to move forward as part of the additional funding we received uh, that we have until June 2021 to spend. Fantastic. Any questions from anyone? A lot of effort, a lot of, a lot of activity. Uh, didn't slow down, actually kind of sped up. And so, again, I think it's just a, a real testament to coordination and capacity and capability um, uh, and uh, working with the city uh, of Schenectady uh, and uh, saving some dollars uh, is going to help us to continue uh, to drive activity into 21. All right. Well, with that said, we've got four items uh, uh, on the agenda tonight uh, for our consideration. Uh, the very first is uh, actually acquiring uh, properties from the city of Schenectady. David, can you summarize? Sure. Yeah, as I said, we're only acquiring properties that we have an end use for. Uh, these four uh, are transactions that we'd like to be part of. The, the two main properties would be 1213 First Avenue and 602 Orchard Street. Jason properties, they both had uh, multi-unit buildings on them that long had been uh, vacant. Uh, 1213 First Avenue, I think it was a six unit. 602 Orchard Street was close to that. The neighborhood discussed their interest in seeing further single family uh, uses in that area. Uh, and we, as part of the new funding, we received, um, uh, had lined up money for Habitat to help us uh, reach, reach that goal. The other two, 929 Crane Street, uh, we demolished that. Uh, two years ago, I believe, uh, we're working with one of the neighboring business owners on his New York Main Street application to further beautify that corridor. Uh, it stre streamlines the process a little bit if we uh, take the title uh, to the property first. And 109 Irving is uh, adjacent, uh, excuse me, across the way from uh, the St. Mary's School, uh, in touch with uh, a neighbor there who would have been negatively impacted by the development. Uh, it was a blighted home that we took down, and this will um, further uh, improve the neighborhood for all. So this uh, resolution 2020-08 is just to accept the properties from the city of Schenectady. The committee uh, met the city of, of Schenectady um, committee meeting was last night, approving this transfer. Uh, the council will be next Monday. Again, I thank Kristen and her team for uh, helping guide this uh, forward for us. Any questions come out of committee uh, at all last night during city council? Everybody was supportive. Yeah, I, I haven't heard uh, anything on my end. I know uh, uh, not not necessarily out of committee. I know the mayor um, was kind of asking about the, the property transfers for First Street and Orchard. So I explained to him that it was related to the Habitat new builds. Um, and that was really the only question I received. So he was probably just curious what we were doing with those and. Okay. Any so other the resolution? Thank you, Joe. A second, please. Uh, Mr. All those in favor of the people saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The motion is moved. Thank you very much. Uh, the second uh, item that we have on the list tonight uh, regarding uh, 109 Irving, uh, some additional actions that we need to take. David, can you summarize? Yep. 202009 uh, is that once we take title to that property, we're going to turn around and sell it to the neighbor, Ms. Danica Goodridge. She's a homeowner at 111 Irving Street. Uh, she's completed an application. Uh, everything's in good order on her end. She's looking to make a significant investment uh, that will uh, improve uh, the value of her property with a driveway and a side yard. Uh, the one thing I'd like to know, uh, I talked to Joe Berlant before the meeting. Uh, he just wanted to put in um, a few uh, words uh, in front of the now therefore be resolved, uh, just clarifying that we have the permission to sell this property from the board after uh, we successfully acquire it from the city. Excellent. Typical uh, project uh, where, you know, we're helping uh, with that, uh, you know, neighbors make a difference. Uh, and so, um, any questions with respect to this resolution? I move the resolution. Second. Thanks, Kathy. All those in favor to keep us saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is moved. Thank you very much. Okay, third item. First half, 
1213 First Ave, 602 Orchard, that's 2020-10, uh, some Habitat uh, for Humanity projects. Um, David, can you go ahead and summarize again? Yep, this resolution just allocates the $100,000 we received as part of the additional enterprise funding to support uh, one additional home project by Habitat. Uh, it usually takes them about $125,000 to do a house. Uh, they'll want to do two at this site. I know that they also applied for some home CDBG funding uh, from the city of Schenectady. So we're looking to invest $100,000 in. Um, you know, we've had various projects and um, different ways that we crafted projects with Habitat. Uh, the best way for us to move this one forward, because we're not anticipating much more, uh, at least in the immediate future, for um, funding from enterprise is that it allows us to put our money in and upon the sale of the property, which they tend to sell them for a hundred thousand, uh, excuse me, eighty thousand uh, dollars. We'll get um, our proceeds back out of it up to the sale price. So if that's going to be eighty thousand dollars, we'll get the eighty thousand dollars back. That will continue to invest in future work um, with Habitat and or others uh, uh, partners. So. Um, Habitat's uh, very excited uh, about this project. Uh, they're still moving forward with their carry projects as well. Um, they're, um, we've had some great conversations about um, their capacity uh, to, to do all of these projects at once. Uh, we've also had uh, put them in touch with some of our other uh, partners who maybe for one reason or another during the current um, COVID uh, crisis uh, may have some additional construction management um, capabilities and or um, you know staff that they could use so we're committed to uh, making sure this is a success for us and and for habitat and again this is uh, exactly what the neighborhood asked us to do uh, in this area which is close to where the city's investing in orchard park and what we're doing with the main street corridor not far away from the new library so it's uh it's we made a considerable progress in mount pleasant uh, a little bit bigger area than uh, Eastern where it's just so visible right away. But, um, you know, the, the plan is is being laid out where, you know, we're really seeing some good progress. Again, I want to applaud the land bank team uh, staff and leadership for coming up with a comprehensive plan for Crane Street. As David just said, larger footprint you know, spread out. you got to have to figure out the contiguous um uh plot breaks are how do we make this work uh and uh, having habitat uh, as a partner uh they've you know obviously shown success in other corridor um uh, focus uh, points that we have and and or have had in the past um i'm happy that uh, we're um, continuing to support them continuing to support the neighborhood single fam families where uh, multi families used to to um uh, reside obviously uh, creates a de-densification, uh, which is part of you know what we want to do. Take some of that um, um, uh, old supply that uh, uh, is uh, adding load and um, and too much capacity uh, uh, in a given neighborhood, uh, and uh, open up um, open up these corridors uh, to reinvestment. So I think it's a great project. I hope that everyone else does as well. Can I get a motion to move it? So moved. Mr. a second. Anyone? Second. Thanks, Rich. Uh, all those in favor, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Another good project. Okay, uh, last item on the list for today uh, is an amendment uh, to our uh, uh, demolition schedule, 2020-11. Um, 20, um, uh, David, if you wanna summarize some of the properties that are in the list. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, <laughs> Kristen will probably, and all, all of you who've worked in, in government and, and or just anywhere know, know that sometimes it just seems incredibly chaotic uh, to do the work that we do and get the coordination, but uh, we've been successful. And um, because of that, uh, with a coordination between the codes department and and uh, the development department, we were able to um, work closely, identify which pro properties were unsafe, which uh, usually results in us being able to take a property down at a, um, a, a lower cost 
So we ended up saving $66,000 um, over the 15 properties that we had um, uh, first uh, contracted with um, Gore Construction. Um, we knew that there was, uh, and, and through that, we also had talked to some neighbors and stuff and other properties had come up about, you know, very happy to see us having done uh, the properties that we did, but there's another property we should consider. And working closely with the city, we we came up with the uh, 1856 Foster Avenue is one that we could get done with a current contract um, for a, a fair price. And then with 431 Schenectady Street, it was one that our partners, the community land, better community neighbors, which is community land trust and BCN, B, BNI, um, that um, if we could nudge them along and help them to get this done sooner, it would help them with their own enterprise grant that they received, uh, which was $600,000. And they've been a, a little slow to get started just because the the number of contracts that they have and, and, and you know, it's hard to start over with a new administration. So we agreed that um, we could uh, add 431 Schenectady Street with the approval of enterprise, which they provided us to our project and then taken down another one in Foster Avenue, uh, right in the north side where we said we wanted to do some more work uh, for roughly the same cost as um, the savings that we had before. After all this is said and done, we'll still have, because we've gotten such good value for these demolitions, we'll still have some more work, uh, money to do more work in Schenectady uh, that we'll be able to uh, move forward as we um, meet our requirements, um, uh, project requirements on our Amsterdam work as well. So yeah, this is just uh, adding these two properties at the prices below. There will be some other costs associated to asbestos abatement, excuse me, uh, asbestos abatement monitoring um, as well, but um, you know, good value and uh, glad to move it forward. The 36,900 will end up getting reimbursed. And again, with, uh, with enterprise, uh, it is that's okay for us to get reimbursed and we'll just put it in our in our pockets to do more um, good projects in the future. And I think the key uh, that I'd like to point out is the fact that, you know, administratively we're trying to pull some, we're trying to take some lift off of the newly consolidated uh, better neighborhoods, better community neighborhoods incorporated. Um, and we recognize that, that they're putting, they've got the right leadership in place but I, I, I want to see them be successful. I want them to be successful. Um, uh, we all do uh, from the perspective of um, uh, an agency of record uh, that is going to be here long term uh, and continuing to help lift the neighborhoods, support neighborhood revitalization, support neighborhood stabilization. And I think when they came to us and said, you know, can you help us so that we aren't immediately, you know, sipping through a straw, right, as water is coming over the snorkel, if you will. Um, and I'm really glad that we're able to do it and we're able to do it at a, uh, a value that, um, you know, as David pointed out, um, uh, we're benefiting from uh, these uh, demos have come in um, at great numbers. And, uh, and I think that uh, our ability to help them to get off the ground, help them to get off running, help transition us into that from a, um, strictly we're doing demolitions and rehabilitation into more of a how do we help to guide and manage the success of the neighborhoods long term um, and you know want to talk about that uh, in a second but I'd like to get a motion um, to move this on a second uh, so who would like to move the motion so move thank you and a second all those in favor, and people say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is moved. Thank you. So that is it for our uh, new business uh, tonight, uh, or the actions that I needed the board. We needed the board to take. Um, and I would like to just kind of transition the conversation to. So I've been, you know, moved as I'm sure everyone else has um, uh, by. Uh, the 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 experiences that we've had as a nation, and the experiences that we've had as a community, and the experiences that we individually have um, as uh, residents within within our neighborhoods, within our communities, uh, I've been moved by the fact that we have racial inequity amongst uh, uh, our 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 members. Uh, and I don't mean this board; I mean as a community. 
We have racial inequities. Uh, all I read a, uh, a quote that said uh, something along the lines, and I think and I'm, I'm going to say it wrong, but uh, I think it was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar who said, you know, racial inequity is is everywhere, and until you shine a light on it, it's like dust. You could be in a room and it looks perfectly clear, and when you shine the right light, when you have the right lens, the dust is in suspension everywhere. And I, it, 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 it was impactful to me from the sense of what do I do, what do we do, what can uh, we do that's not, and I'm going to be really um, uh, kind of uh, uh, frank from a, I don't want to kneel, I want to take action. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, give a platitude. I want to know what we can do as a, as a community, as an individual, uh, and as a, as a board that's making a difference today, making a difference in our neighborhoods, making a difference in our community, making a difference for those around us. And when I thought of what the land bank has done now since 2013, um, you know, we've revitalized neighborhoods, we've stabilized neighborhoods, we've committed the corridor investment. But what can, what else can we do? What should we do? That is not simply, um, you know, we stand for, we're in support of. And I know we are. I know each and every one of you feels that way, uh, or I expect that you do, and I suspect that you do. Um, but I think to myself, as a land bank, can we make a difference? Can we help, you know, if we look at what the underlying issues are, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to deep dive the, the, the cure. I want to be, I want to help with what I think can help solve some of the problem. And, and that really gets to the core of neighborhood inequity, poverty in neighborhoods, um, the inability for uh, neighborhoods to have stable family and family lives. And while I do not profess to know the answer to curing poverty or curing broken families, I know that as an organization, as a group, and as a committed um, uh, round of individuals, I think that if we can maybe form a committee, uh, I don't want to over encumber it with policy and procedure. I'm simply saying maybe we can reach out into our community liaisons and find out, number one, who can join the land bank that can represent the communities that um, are uh, under this pressure and have these inequities and have these inequalities. And how can we help from a, a family first education component, right? We revitalize, we stabilize, and we create a family first. How do we help? How do we educate? How do we support? How do we support home ownership? How do we stabilize home ownership? Um, and I and I'd like to ask the, the board. Uh, I don't need a, a raise of hands tonight, but I sure would like a response. Uh, you know, over the next few days, uh, or certainly before we meet again. Um, you know, can we come together as a committee? Can we form a, a subgroup uh, that says who would be a great member to add to this to this land bank? Who would be a great member that can help us with? that communication. Um, I don't want to become an agency that we're shaking the cup. You've heard me say that before, but we've got some money uh, that I think is unencumbered. And, and while I want to continue to do demos because I think that's impactful in our neighborhoods, um, and I certainly uh, appreciate and applaud and we want to support the Habitat style projects, but I think if we can figure out how to help our community with that family first focus, how we can help someone to really understand, can they get home ownership? Um, can we create stability in the family? Then I think that we've done our part all the way around the life cycle of what it means to, to, to support our neighborhoods. Um, and so I, I hope that uh, you all feel the same. Um, I hope that, uh, um, um, uh, you know, we can find uh, another representative and I hope that you would support me in expanding um, the role and or the number of people that sit on the land bank board. So that was open commentary and I, and I welcome any comments or criticisms or feedback. No criticism, I agree with you, but I think part of our problem is that we're a top-down group. We were established as a top uh, group. Uh, we're not the ones to go out and look to see who should be on the board. We need to be able to 
make it aware that we would like to be able to do that and let the suggestions come from the community that we're trying to serve and let them make some of the suggestions because they've seen what we've done. They know that we're successful. They know that we've got a good staff. What would they like to see the land bank engaged in if it still is able to meet the statutory requirements that we have as to what we can do? Good feedback. Thanks, Joe. Right. We have appointments by the county, um, uh, by city council, uh, both in Amsterdam, uh, common council, rather, in Amsterdam, and uh, city council in Schenectady, and uh, uh, directly by the mayor. Uh, so to your point, we'd have to reach out to those bodies to say, here's what we'd like. We'd like to add to our our, our, our board membership uh, for these reasons. I appreciate that. And I, I think the fact of going out to them after we've already done some work within the neighborhood and gotten their feedback on the thing makes it even better because they're responsible to those neighborhoods and the people in the neighborhoods uh, even much more than we are. Absolutely. I, know, I know that we've got a few legislators, uh, retired uh, uh, city county employees and current city employees on, on, the, uh, on the board, uh, but I wouldn't go to them first, I would go to them last. And at that point, you're, you, you've got can say this is a way to be able to defuse any activity because this is what the people want. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. Other comments? I welcome any and all. I welcome a private conversation, Mr. Paterni. I just Thank want you. to say I appreciate you outlining that, Rich, and I am 100% on board with what you said. Um, you know, just the nature of the community development piece of our office, we're heavily involved with a lot of groups um, and have been increasing that involvement um, over the last couple of years. I think just with some of the projects you're familiar with, like the Craig Main Connection, for example. Um, and I just would say that, yeah, I'd be definitely happy to join a subcommittee. Um, I think, yeah, maybe the first step is kind of identifying, you know, thinking about expanding the board, which I agree that those recommendations should come directly from the community. Um, but then maybe also that subcommittee can think of other ways to align resources with, uh, you know, the priorities of the community that we're talking about. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways we could be creative with the funding that we have. And I agree that demolitions are definitely, you know, needed and there's such an issue of vacancy and blight. Um, but I think there's so many more things so that the land bank can consider doing and being creative with uh, any funding we might have and then ways we can leverage that funding um, yeah. for community efforts, so. Exactly what was kind of top of mind for me, Kristen, and I appreciate the comments and I appreciate your participation and desire to be part of that community outreach, subcommittee, if you will. Um, you know, when I look at, we've got, a fair amount of money sitting unencumbered um, and I, again going to use it for our primary mission but even taking um, a set aside you know um, whatever that value is whatever we decide that is as a board um, I think we can leverage that I think we can actually leverage it not only in you know uh, we put 50 grand into something and you know a developer puts 500 in kind of thing more so that if we put an effort into something this may be the way in which we can resonate um, with higher powers that have the purse strings for more keep doing that land bank um, type funding streams, whether that's the attorney general or that's uh, other members of our, uh, of our uh, state uh, uh, leadership. Um, I think that we can make a difference. I think we can um, uh, put dollars in play that could lead to additional funding streams. It's a complete gut thought. I have no inside knowledge on that. I just feel like this is what we should do, uh, and we should do everything we can to continue to make a difference like we have, um, but but alter uh, uh, our focus uh, with a you know a program, if you will. Um, that uh, that's we're just here to help. We're just here to make a difference. So. Rich, I, I completely agree with everything that, that you've said, everything that Joe has said, and everything that Kristen has said wholeheartedly. Um, help me, just help me get through my head 
logistically how do we how do we add this extra member do we have to we reach out to the city the county or both or yeah uh, david I'll, I'll i'll defer to you I, I i gotta look into the bylaws but again knowing that we had appointments um uh that make up our our, our body uh we'd have to reach into those same um leadership teams to say here's what we're proposing david did i I make a mess out of that? No, no, I think we, we will need to review the existing bylaws and then also the uh, intermusable agreement that originally set us up, which I think laid out our bylaws references that as to uh, the board member appointments. Um, uh, in, and Mark and I will can look in, uh, into that and uh, report back to the board at our next meeting uh, as to how we take that step. Uh, at the same time, you know, we can uh, pull together a, a small group of, of the board who's interested in talking about this just uh, to determine, um, you know, how we want to approach uh, different community members, uh, discuss our role, uh, define what, you know, we look like um, moving forward, uh, being that, you know, we are administered out of a different organization. Um, you know, in, in Schenectady, at least, I can speak uh, more clearly about uh, that our role here is that you know we've done our best to try to add the capacity to the other groups rather than to you know kind of carve out a piece of our own pie um and at the same time help uh, Kristen and her department in any way that we can um with with our knowledge and and our skills um whole, wholeheartedly uh, support this uh this effort rich and i spent some time talking about it um a few days ago I think it's important to make sure that we are um, uh, not only um, um, meeting the community's goals, but also representative of, of the community so that we can see things in, uh, from, from all the views. So um, I, like, I like where this is going and um, I, you know, I appreciate everyone's support. Thank, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. I, you know, whatever we need to do to make this happen. I think it's a it's a great step in, a, in the right direction for our board. Thank you. I, I agree as well. I think everything we're saying here is a step in the right direction. I think we need to step it up as everyone else should be stepping up right across the nation. And I think Bob, yeah. if you and Nick have any other, um, you know, uh, feedback on how best to uh, work with existing groups or, or help be the uh, catalyst for other groups in Amsterdam to to grow and, and do things that they, they need to do to improve the community, let, it, let us know. we Will do. I'll, I'll have a conversation with Nick and then I'll at our next meeting, I'll report back and let you know, you know, the direction that we think we can go. Okay, very good. The thought I had was that we might be able to do a member at large, like be someone who you know, wouldn't necessarily be from Schenectady or from Amsterdam. It could be from, you know, I mean, obviously one of those communities, but, uh, but that may be a type of a position we could be looking for. You know. So I, I think this is a step in the right direction. Rich, I'm glad you brought this to the board. Thank you. I appreciate everyone's support and comments. Rich, just one more quick thing. It, it, it'd be nice to be able to, and, I, and I'm not sure logistically how this works, but it would be nice for us to give a recommendation to whoever that may be, whether it be the city or the county, say, hey, the land bank would like to recommend right. whoever, um, and then go from there. I mean, the, you know, we want somebody that's going to be a good fit for our board. Um, and I think this could be, you know, a very important position. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, I think that's exactly uh, right. I want to reinforce um, some of what I just heard. Uh, and, and thank you. It, everything uh, resonates for me with what, what you guys uh, uh, um, came back with in terms of feedback. And that makes a lot of sense to me. I want this to be about augmenting maybe what other agencies are doing and helping to give them the lift that they need. And I think having that come from a board member on the land bank that we've recommended because through community outreach we recognize that that individual uh, from an amsterdam outreach perspective from a city slash county of schenectady perspective 
has that has that um, um, uh, that communication path and that communication capability, um, and that's where I think we can we can leverage and make a difference. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I would ask staff to uh, peruse the intermunicipal agreement as well as our bylaws so that I'm we're articulating that properly. But Rich, I agree that if we make a recommendation on who we think would be a great fit um, based on some subcommittee activity and some community and some from collaboration, I think that's the right way to go. So Rich, I just wanted to say that I am completely supportive as well of this initiative. I think it's fantastic. And what we may want to do is if we're going to look at the IMA, maybe there's maybe we want to look at um, after the subgroup has some ideas, it, it may trigger something we may also want to change in the IMA. Yeah, good good call. Gives us an opportunity to make that adjustment, make that edit. Um, so, okay. Um, you know, again, I thank you. I thank you all um, for that support. Um, uh, the, 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 the phrasing again, Families First, the Families First Initiative, the Families First Mentoring Group, whatever, you know, our subcommittee, the Families First Initiative, uh, um, that's what just keeps rattling around for me, um, but I'm very open to um, how that Play-Doh shapes out. And, um, you know, we've been together a long time, um, and I know that um, uh, our intent um, is followed up with action. It's shown by what we've done with almost $9 million um, in funding stream. We've made a significant difference in every neighborhood we've gone into. Uh, and I think this is uh, a way that uh, we can continue to make that difference this year, next year, and years beyond um, um, working with other agencies that have, need that kind of lift, need that mentoring, need that guidance, and or just need our support. Um, and uh, um, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the, this uh, this next phase uh, and this augmentation. So, okay, thank you. Um, with that, I have nothing else to cover. David, uh, uh, anything else uh, that we need to go over uh, from a new business perspective, or can we go to adjournment? No, I think uh, we're all set. I just say we uh, will not need to meet in July. Uh, so I wish everyone a happy uh, July and um, you know August, September. We'll I'll, I'll be in touch to uh, give you an update of where we are and see if there's any board actions that need to be taken. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, and again, just to kind of reinforce, um, I am going to dig in uh, with staff on, uh, you know, a subcommittee and, and kind of maybe gather. Uh, so, Kristen, I know you had raised your hand. Thank you very much. If anyone else wants to be part of that, please email myself or staff. Um, um, and uh, uh, we're going to do some of that work. We're not going to not do any of that until August or, or, or September. Um, and uh, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to the outcome there, so. Okay, with that said, uh, I'm gonna adjourn the June 16th meeting uh, for the land bank. Thank you, everyone. I wish everyone um, uh, 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 wellness um, and uh, stay safe. I look forward to seeing you all in person uh, without a mask on. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Stay Bye. safe. Stay safe. Thank you.